Hi friends, a question that we are often asked by our students and learners is what is the difference between competitive programming and software development? And should I focus on competitive programming or should I focus on software development, building actual software? So first let's understand what is competitive programming, how is it different from software development and where you should put your effort and energies at, right? So let's go step by step. So first and foremost, Competitive programming is all about given a well-defined problem with clear inputs and outputs and clear expectation on what is expected. You have to build a simple module. Typically what happens here is you have to write some simple code which is at most 50 or 60 lines at most. If you write efficiently, it's much smaller and you have to solve a well-defined problem in 20 to 30 minutes. Again, there are tons of competitive programming platforms where there are well-defined problems that you have to write code in 20 to 30 minutes. Again, if you notice the skills that you need to participate in competitive programming are programming knowledge in any major programming language of your choice, foundational understanding of core data structures and algorithms. You also need to learn how to debug your code, how to understand where your code is going wrong in case it's going wrong. Very importantly, how to write edge cases or boundary cases. These are the four most important skills that you need for competitive programming. Now, what is, what is competitive programming trying to test? It is trying to help you build problem solving skills and that's what it is also testing you for. Given a well-defined question, a well-defined problem with clear inputs and outputs, can you write code for it in a given restricted period of time? Again, this is all about problem solving. And remember, problem solving is an extremely important skill in the workplace because it is often referred to as a transferable skill, which means if you have good problem solving skills in one domain, and if you learn the foundations of other, other areas or other domains, the problem solving skills that you learned in one domain can be transferred to other domains. Now, additionally, what it's also testing, as you can see here, is it tests foundational knowledge in computer science. It, can't, it doesn't test all areas of computer science, but it tests the most important stuff in, 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 uh, uh, in a real workplace, which is your ability to program foundational understanding of data structures and algorithms. Because if you know foundational data structures and algorithms, you can learn many other concepts in computer science very easily. Now, competitive programming is also often used by the top product-based companies, also called as FANG, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, all these top companies, they use it a lot for their entry level software engineers often referred to as SDE ones and also for SDE two roles. SDE two roles are typically with people of two to three years experience, work experience in software development. Now, why are these used by some of the top product based companies? The reason being it's very interview friendly. In an interview setup, the interviewer can ask you three well defined problems and uh, they can give you about 20, 25 minutes per question and they can see how well you are able to program, how well you are able to debug your own code, how well are you able to handle all the boundary cases while writing a decently optimized code. So it is very interview friendly uh, form, of, uh, form of programming. Now in addition to that, for, for somebody who is practicing competitive programming, it's very quick to complete. Even as a beginner, given some simpler problems, you can write the whole solution in about an hour. So what happens here is these are fun problems to work on, especially if you are a young computer science engineer. These are fun problems. They often feel like playing a game. That's why it's also called as competitive because there are a lot of competitions that happen. It's like playing video games. Of course, you have to apply more problem solving skills here, just like in other video games also. But it's a lot of fun to solve because these are well-defined problems which you can finish in under an hour, even as a beginner. Now, on the other hand, software development is slightly different from this. The objective of software development, as you can see here, is to build useful software from scratch or by using other libraries or other modules. Now, let me give you some examples here. For example, you might want to build a video chat application like Zoom that can accommodate up to 100 people. And that requires, while it requires a lot of foundational computer science knowledge, it also requires other skills that I'll just come to. Similarly, imagine if you want to build a search engine, a small search engine for your company. Let's assume your company has lots of questions and answers that your customers have asked in the past and you want to build a simple search engine for that. This is a live session that we have done. It's a four part live session that we have done where we actually built 
a production ready system uh, and you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Similarly, you can build a group chat app like, uh, like, like WhatsApp, right? Or Telegram. And imagine building it with millions of users parallelly using it. Or you can build a YouTube streaming app like system. Or you can build a IoT device like a Alexa smart speaker. So all these involve considerable amount of software development. And for software development itself, you need all the concepts and all the foundational skills of competitive programming. So for example, you need to know programming well enough. You need to know basic data structures and algorithms. You need to know how to debug code, how to handle boundary cases. You need to have decent problem solving skills. That's why competitive programming is often seen as a basic foundational skills that even helps in software development. But in software development, you need more things. So for example, you need to understand how an operating system works. You need to understand how computer networks work. Suppose if you want to build a Zoom-like app, you need to know basics of uh, basics of computer networks. And you, if you want to build an IoT system, you have to learn how microprocessors and microcontrollers work. Similarly, you might know you might have to learn something about distributed systems or cloud computing, right? So, or even full-stack development. So, software development, in addition to having skills that are required for competitive programming, require additional things. In addition to that, you require a lot of software design skills, whether it's object-oriented programming or low-level design or it's system design, right? Similarly, you need to know basics of software engineering. How do you test your code? How do you work in large teams of software engineers in case you're collaborating with others to build the software? And at the end of it, you also need to know how to deploy your system into production. So what software, what good software developers require is all the skills that are there in competitive programming plus additional skills. That's very, very important. Similarly, if you want to build a decent software for a, for a reasonably complex problem, it takes time. And there is a lot of learning that you will only get by getting your hands dirty. So it is time taking to both learn and build. So in top product based companies for software development engineers two, three and four, there is a lot of focus on system design. There is a lot of focus on low level design. There is a lot of focus on software development because as you're becoming a senior engineer, people expect you to know the basics of comp basic data structures, algorithms, basic problem solving skills, but they also want you to start building more complex software. So as you become a slightly senior two plus years experienced engineer, the importance of software development, software design, they all kick in. Now, very often in software development, what you have is an open-ended problem. For example, build a live streaming app the way you have on YouTube. That's a very open-ended problem. Nobody tells you this input, this output, like in a competitive programming. So you have to figure out how to define the problem in a clean fashion, how to break the problem into smaller chunks and solve it step by step. So even in software development, you need to have a lot of good problem solving skills, which you built in or which you built via competitive programming. And to be honest with you, I've been, I've been through that journey. It's a very satisfying journey to build actual software that end users use. It's very, very satisfying. Now, now, now comes the question, what should I focus on? So here is a simple rule of thumb that we have designed. If you're an undergraduate student, whatever engineering you're doing, or whether even if you're doing BSc or BCom, whatever you're doing, in your first and second year of undergraduate studies, focus on picking up one major programming language, become good at data structures and algorithms, and participate in competitive programming because that gives you the foundational knowledge, right? In your third and fourth year, right? If you're doing a BTEC program or a four-year undergraduate program, spend 50% of your time on competitive programming because a lot of companies for entry-level software engineers ask for competitive programming, but also spend 50% of your time building some useful software whether it is your BTEC third year project or final year project or course projects, build something tangible. And I've seen in many, many interviews, if you build something which scales, which is well built in the interviews or even in general, right? It helps you a lot on your career path. If you have less than three years experience, my suggestion here is do competitive programming for about one fourth or 25% of your time. Remember, Competitive programming and the skills, the foundational skills that you learn, basic data structures, algorithms, problem solving skills are core to whole of software development. So don't skip on it. Spend about 25% of your time on competitive programming. If you're already above average or if you're good with competitive programming, just don't worry about it. Spend more time on software development. 
and if you're three plus years experience then probably you should first of all you have to become decently good at competitive programming you don't have to be a topper in competitions but you need to be able to solve a good chunk of problems at, in a reasonable amount of time for people with three plus years experience my suggestion is spend about 10 percent of your time on competitive programming and 90 plus percent of time on software development because you will be transitioning to sde2 or sde3 or sde4 roles right but remember if you want to transition to a senior role at a top product based company or if you want to build software for your own company or uh, if you want to build software in general becoming good at basic competitive programming helps you in in the long run again i have done competitive not exactly competitive programming i've written i've prepared for some of these again when i was a student there was very little competitive programming but i could solve good 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 interview problems in about 20 to 30 minutes over the years, as my experience increased, I started focusing less and less on competitive programming, more and more on building actual software. But once in a while, I take a couple of problems and try to solve them, write code for it, because it's fun. That fun element in competitive programming is something that people across the spectrum of experiences can still enjoy. And it's also a great, like, it's like afternoon tea, right? I just sip my tea over the weekend, whenever I get time, I pick up an interesting problem, try to solve it. It's a lot of fun and you can get work, you can actually solve the problem in about half an hour, maximum one hour, even if it's a hard problem. But that's like you're achieving something sensible in a short period of time. So again, these are general guidelines. If you're already good with competitive programming, please spend time building the skills for software development because that will help you in the long run. In the long run, in your career of 30, 35 years as a software engineer, in the long run, the problem solving skills of competitive programming are surely helpful, but equally and actually more important are the software development skills that you learn through your career.